live, not from New York. It's the Get Clear Show. And now, here's Laura. Hello and welcome to the Get Clear Show. Thank you so much for being here. We are going to have so much fun today. Today, I am with my favorite person, Richard Santiago II. And hi, Richard. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. We are going to have so much fun today because Richard is going to be doing this segment with us once a month. It's sort of like an artist review where we just found some artwork online that both of us kind of like, and we're going to talk about that artwork. Richard's going to give us some of his expert advice and opinions about that work. But before we get started, Richard, um, I have some information that I need to share with everybody. So I want to share with everybody this wonderful photographer. This is Hua Photography. Ashley Hua is the owner of Hua Photography, and she does some amazing stuff. Doesn't matter where you are in the country, you can always get a hold of her to um, help you out with any of your photograph needs. And you can find her on Facebook at Hua Photography. Just type that in. You'll have no problem finding her at all. So, Richard, I know that you've been looking at different artists, and you have some great stuff for us to look at today. So who are we going to look at first? Okay. Um, well, we've got uh, three artists today to look at. Um, both, uh, all three are from different genres. Uh, different types of artwork, um, different categories. And uh, I picked these three, as well as you, uh, Laura, you helped me, uh, we went through these together. Uh, we picked these three because um, they're outstanding. And in my opinion, uh, I find their work very interesting. And yeah, they have some really good stuff. And I think each yeah. one of them is unique and has yeah. something special to bring to the table. So I'm really, really excited about that and excited about what we're going to look at and discuss today. Yeah, definitely. Okay, would you like me to pull one up? Yeah, would you? Okay. Um, can you see it? Yes. Who are we looking at right now? Okay, uh, right now we're looking at artist Jay Reed. Um, I, I came across this artist uh, on Instagram because he's uh, constantly updating and posting uh, more and more of his artwork each day. Awesome. Um, I, I found his artwork to be very interesting. Um, he, he's he's kind of like the comic book genre, and um, I mean, I just I just think his work is amazing. And well, uh, I can see why you would have fallen in love with his stuff because. Yeah. You do a lot of this type of stuff yourself. So, <laughs> you know, I look at this and I'm like, wow, Richard can do that too. I can't even draw a stick figure straight. So, yeah. so let's go through some of this and, and kind of maybe tell me a little bit of, ooh, there's one I really like right there. Which one? The girl's face. Yeah, oh, okay. right there. All right. Yeah, that's really nice. I like the details in the hair. It looks like it's digital artwork. Um, I don't know if he did it with a tablet or he just uh, went through it in, in some other program. But, uh, yeah, the lighting looks really good. It looks digital. That, that, can't, be, uh, that can't be traditional. That can't be paint. But um, I like this one, this one with the motorcycle, because those rims, look the way he drew the rims and the motorcycle is so proportionately correct. That is really cool. I like that. That is really nice. So do you have to measure something like that when you're drawing? Does somebody have to measure that? How do they get it proportionate? I mean, I wouldn't measure it. I would draw it by eye, but I'm pretty sure he drew it by eye. I'm pretty sure he freehanded it uh, and then just went through the process of coloring it and inking it. But um, I love that's what I like about this one is because of those rims. Those are really nice. But um, this guy, he, you know, he's, he, he does digital art, uh, digital illustration. And, um, oh, wow, that Spider-Man is animated. Oh, look at that. Oh, look it. How did he do that? You know, actually, I don't know how he did that. I, you know, I, I know how I would have done it. I would have done it in Photoshop, what he did, and just gone through the layers and then made uh, a 24 frame per second animated uh, GIF, uh, GIF. But um, that's how I would have done it. I don't, I don't know how he did it. He could have done it a number of ways. 
Wow, so that's, that's pretty really, cool. I like that. Uh, so what, yeah, would, you he, that's, use, that's what really, would you use an animation for? Like an adver online advertisement or something? Um, Probably your website. I think I think if I was going to use an animation, which I have in the past, um, I used it for my social media, okay. and then um, and then what I would use it for now would probably be um, uh, my website or um, just sure. just to grab the attention of uh, of of the observer. That's pretty you know, cool. Some, something moving. Wow, that's really cool. That Raphael with the. Uh, the uh, lightsaber blades. <laughs> that's really. Uh, Is that's that amazing. digital or did he freehand that? He probably freehanded the drawing at first and then scanned in the pencils. Okay. And then he um he went through the layers of coloring it, but uh that's really fine work right there. I like that a lot. This is really cool too. I like this stuff. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, he did Fat Albert. Oh wow. Then... <laughs> I remember Fat Albert. I was a little yeah. kid. We used to watch that all the time. I loved that. Yeah, movie. yeah. I was a little kid watching that too on TV. I think it was like Saturday mornings. Yeah, that Saturday morning really cartoons. Good. I remember I'd go to my grandmother's house and watch that. That was so much fun. Yeah. Wow, these are really cool. Man, this guy's a pro, man. You, you can tell he makes a living doing it. Did, but, I um, think he had some other things besides illustrations. Oh, right. he did? Okay. I think so. I don't know. Let's scroll up to the top of his. He's got yeah. comics. Oh, illustrations, art book. I wonder what's in his art book. Okay. I'm just curious. Or maybe. Now. Oh, oh, guess... okay. oh, okay. Wow. Wow, that's some really good digital coloring. Okay, so I guess if we scroll down a little bit. Okay. It says. Click here for an image to purchase. Okay, so this guy's actually making a living with his art. That's pretty cool. I want to get so, a hold of him. <clears throat> I, I know some of these people we tried to get a hold of before we did this show, and we yeah. didn't get a response back. But so, hey, if you are listening, artist Jay Reed, <laughs> yeah. we want to talk to you, and um, we want you to give us some answers about your work because it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I love his coloring. It's fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Wow. That is really good. Okay. So, so yeah. was this his, let's see, are you on his Instagram? Instagram? Is that where you are? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not connected to him by Facebook. I just started following him on Instagram. Okay. So you're on his Instagram site. Yeah. So on, it looks like he's on Facebook too. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah probably. Okay. So he's got all kinds of, scroll back up. I think he has all kinds of social media sites. Oh, yeah, yeah there you go. Artist Twitter, Jay Reed. Facebook, Jay Reed. Hello, Mr. Jay Reed. We want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And um, looks like he does Snapchat, too. Okay, I'll contact he's him. Everything, and see yeah. See if he's interested in an interview for the show. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, 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 like, lo I really like it. He also has some products for sale. Oh, he does? Where is that? Um... Uh, Let me see if I can click on it. Let me scroll up. Okay. Just a second. I, there we go. Products for sale. Let's see what he's got. Okay. Cool. When, oh, you're wow. talented, when you're talented like that, you can put any of your work on your t-shirts. And you know, that's something that I try to talk to people about when they're, they're good visual artists like this. Mm -hmm. Hey, there are so many ways to make a living with your artwork and t-shirts are definitely one of those ways to go. T-shirts, mugs, um, all sorts of products that you can put your work on and get out there, especially usable stuff. People love usable stuff. Things are going to wear, you know, all of that. Yeah. So did this open it up in another, no, we have to backspace, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he does some awesome stuff yeah yeah I, I really like his stuff a lot and i think he's from california which i think is cool because Cal california's got some really good artists and um he fits right in with that whole uh reputation of california artists oh, um I sequential art oh can we look at that that let's go uh, find out yeah i just want to uh sequential art samples let me see what oh okay is. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's nice. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Probably some freelance work. 
Uh, that's nice. Nice digital coloring. Oh, uh, this okay. is the, this. So the I look at this and I'm like, Richard, you do stuff yeah. like this. This is the kind of stuff that you do. Right. Right. So um, you can kind of guess already how he did this and what his methods are just because you already do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, I can't really tell you exactly what he did, but all I can tell you right now, looking at this one, is digital. He called he colored it digitally. Uh, started from a freehand sketch, or maybe he just drew directly into the tablet. I, I really don't know, but it's exciting. Look, he's kicking off the head of a robot, and he's wearing a bear suit, a bear costume. That's pretty interesting. That's, all the all the little details to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the angle, the leg swing. I mean, it looks animated. I mean, this is one of those guys you could see working for Pixar in the next few years. Um, you know, working on concept illustrations and stuff. His work is really good. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so that was um, Jay Reed, right? Yeah, artist Jay Reed. Uh, you can find him on Facebook right on there. On Instagram or Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Well, we we need to get a hold of him. Look, he's got a contact button. Let's go to his contact button. Uh, contact button. Contact. Oh, I I don't see that. I see uh, it. Hang on. Let's go back up. I got it. Let's oh, I see. Okay, all right. Yeah, I want to see. So, you know what? Let's do something we've never done live before. Okay, we're going to contact them? Yeah, let's go ahead and... <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put your name, Richard. <laughs> all right. You're an imposter. <laughs> I am. I know. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so... Um, where are we going to email you? Our Santiago art? I'll put it in. Okay. Okay. All right. On and, my website. Yeah, and then when we come back for our our um, review next month, we'll let our audience know whether or not this guy ever got a hold of us. It'll be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a show with him. That's great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So for those of you who are just now kind of jumping on here and maybe you've scrolled through this video and, and you've gotten to this point. So here's what we're doing. Richard Santiago is one of my favorite artists and him and I are doing it. You know, I do the artist of the week every week and once a month, Richard and I get together now and we are doing artist reviews. So we find these artists online. We pull them up, we start looking at their work, and we share that with you guys. Well, we found this artist, his name is Jay Reed, and um, he does a lot of the same type of stuff that, that Richard does. So we're gonna try contacting him. We're gonna see if maybe we can get him to be a guest on our show, or at least at least get him to message us back. So that'd be pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, okay, that's great, you ready to submit? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I didn't edit it or check my spelling. Okay. Okay, all right. All right. Awesome. Looks great. Cool. We contacted him. That's great. That'd be great if you That is great. Yeah. He really does some cool. good stuff. I mean, because yeah. we can sit here, we can sit here and guess all day long of, you know, how did he do this? Did he right. do it on a pad or how right. did he do it? But it'd be nice if he would tell us himself. Maybe we'll right. even send him a copy of the, the show when we're done. And so you know, now let's move over. I want to. I really want to look at this Charlie Bowwater. Can we take a look at Charlie? Oh, okay. You want to look at that one? No, no. They'll save Francois for last. Uh, Charlie Bowwater. Oh, wow. This is really good. This stuff is unbelievable. When yeah. you and I were going through, I think we originally found this artist on Pinterest, didn't we? I think so. And then we just, we found her website. Oh, wow. Right. That is really fantastic. Just phenomenal stuff. And then I think we found, I don't know how we found this artist, but I remember looking at that going, wow, this is incredible. So you told me when we were looking through this stuff that you think this artist probably went to art school to be able to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this artist went to art school. I mean, everything is just so computer perfect. I mean, it's flawless. There's, there's not a flaw. I'm, I'm looking at this piece right here. 
This Which one, right one? Here. This one? Uh, here, I'll click on it right here. Okay, yeah. So I'm looking at that thinking, you know, come on. <laughs> it's too perfect. It looks like a postcard. It could be a postcard. Yeah, well, I mean, this this artist, Charlie. Oh, we, that's right. We found out it's a woman. Charlie's a woman. But, um, yeah, no, no. She's on that level. This artist is on that level where her work is completely marketable. Yes. And um, How does she do this? Like, look at this. You know, honestly, I, 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 I don't. It looks digital. I, I don't have the slightest clue how this artist does this because it's so consistent. Like every piece, every single piece is is using the entire canvas, and um, there isn't a dull space on any of the pieces. And um, I think it's digital. Wow. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe it's freehand. Maybe this started out as a pencil drawing. But because of the level that this artist is on, I think they, they just went straight into sketching into a digital, uh, a digital tablet. Okay, so I have a question for you. Yeah. I'm looking at, let me run my mouse over this. You see that picture right there? Yeah. Okay. So do you see this sort of ghost image in the background? Yeah. How does somebody do that? It's just a different yeah. color. She used, she's using white and gray here. Where over here she's using brown, black, and 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 yellow. You, you see, she's using yellow and orange and dark, dark, dark orange like brown, and then a lot of brown here, and then back here she's using a lot of whites and grays. And artwork, artwork is really a lot of illusion because you take a two-dimensional space that's flat like a sheet of paper, and you and you make the person. If you're good enough, you can make the person look at an image and believe and believe it's another world. So in this case, the artist was successful, and you have this like almost like specter in the background. And um, the way they did it is the use of color. These are dark colors down here, and uh, she's using light colors up here, and it gives the illusion that it's either light or or it's some sort of spirit. That's just, it's amazing to me. You know, that reminds me when you were talking about taking a flat surface, you know, yeah. and making it look like an illusion. It reminds me of those people who do that sidewalk art. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's you think they're going to fall into a hole or you're yeah. walking up some steps or something. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the, I love those. <laughs> that is crazy. Those. Let's see what else she has. She has some great stuff. Yeah. Wow. And she has so many of them. So if we that's scroll up, does she have like a... Wow. Oh, I don't know, portfolio or something? Uh, let's see. Uh, gallery. Or I think we're in the gallery context. Let's go to sketches. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, she draws, uh, looking at these lines, she draws directly into the digital tablet, the drawing tablet. Okay. I don't even think she uses pencil anymore. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. They look so real. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty bananas. Uh wow. Wow. I w I would like to ask this person a few questions. Like, did you go to school? She had to go to school. I mean you can tell by her style. I mean, this is this is professionally trained. This isn't a self taught yes. artist. That, that that can't get the proportions of a face right. This is a, a professional artist that went to school, was trained for it. Um, her resume is probably outstanding. <laughs> That's what I think of. Well, there's an about page. Let's let's check out the about page. Okay. Let's see what we find out about Charlie Bowater. Oh wow, that's her. Oh wow, a picture of her. Look at that. So she's from the UK. Oh, oh, born in the UK in 1988, raised on 90s cartoons and as much Disney as possible. <laughs> Charlie now lives and works as a full-time lead, con I'll tell you she's a concept, concept artist and illustrator. She has worked on a variety of projects, including concept and marketing art for games, editorial work, tutorials, illustrations, and book covers. She also spends as much time as humanly possible with her nose in a good book. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's incredible. 
So I, for some reason, I was thinking that we found her on Pinterest, but maybe we found her on a Google search. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how we found her, but I'm glad we did because yeah. the work is really good. Yeah. And this was one that I actually did contact, and she has not gotten back with us. I contacted oh, okay. her, what was that, about three or four weeks ago, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, we haven't, we haven't heard anything back. We're going to have to try that again. I'll try contacting her again after today's show. And for sure, we'll send her a copy of, of today's episode because she's got some just absolutely incredible stuff. What is it about her stuff that you're drawn to? Uh, that I'm drawn to the, I think the consistency, I think she's, um, I think she's an inspiration to do this type of work, this level of work and, and every piece, uh, be consistently perfect. I mean, she, I mean, as an artist, she might find flaws and say, okay, I know where I went wrong, but where I'm standing, looking at her work, they look flawless. I mean, yeah. it looks like. I think what it is about this particular, like, I, stop for just a second. I yeah. want, I want to point out this. Let me scroll up here. Okay. Maybe. I want to point out this picture right here. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. I really like the mystery of it. There's something elegant. There's something magical about it. There's just there's a mystery to it. Well, well she she does fantasy art and she right. creates art for video games. So um. I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah. I think she went to school. But, it, it, you know, you can't give credit just to school. A lot of it was probably her taking the initiative. She probably has been drawing since she was a child. And, um, you know, she decided that this was what she wanted to do as a career. And she succeeded. She's very good at it. And she has a very great position as a concept artist. Um, yeah, well, let me, let me ask you something about that. Yeah. I think that a lot of people can go to school. That doesn't mean that they have a natural talent that she obviously has. Right. I think that maybe those two things together can help somebody further their art career. But yeah. I mean, you and I both have met people that never went to school and they're still incredibly successful and incredibly talented. And then we've right. also met people who have gone to school and they're not at this level at all. So right? it's hard well, telling I mean, that's, that's what I mean by taking the initiative. It's up to you to get, get yeah. this good. I mean, if you want to get this good, you got to put the work in. That's, that's basically what it comes down to. Right. Oh, wow, that's really nice. I like that. So she, like does she do tutorials? What does that say up there? What, tutorials? Wow. Yeah. She teaches class. I don't know. Let's find out. You can find a number of my video tutorials via my gum, gum road, including my free Brush pack. Oh, wow. She sells brushes too. Wow. She's got her own line of brushes. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I want to click on one of these. Let's, okay. Yeah. Let's click on it and see what it is. It's pro they're probably digital brushes. Uh, 27 year old full time concept artist. She's okay. young. Wow. Yeah. 27. Really Look, okay. $5 prints. Wow. That's really good. Oh. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> oh, you can do this. that you're this good. You're so good. She can, you can do this too, Richard. But yeah, she is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, let's go ahead and go back. Okay, where are we going? Um, uh, hold on. Uh, oh, I guess you just X out of it. Okay. I got it. I got it. All right. Okay. Maybe. Yep. And that takes us back to her. So she has prints. I wonder if... Yeah. If they're the same prints that are for sale. Uh, let's see. Uh, I run my own Etsy store. Did we find her on Etsy? We may have. I don't know. We were all over the place looking. I don't remember. We were just scouting looking for artists, and we came across her and was like, hey, let's review it. Yeah. There's nothing there. Let's see. Uh, what else is there? Let, let's look at our contacts and, and see how people can get in contact with her. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Charlie Bowwater at Hotmail.com. Or fill out the contact form. And I think we did. We filled out this form. We sent it to her. Yeah. So we might have to try getting a hold of her a different way next time. Wow. Wow. What? She's 27 years old and she's, she's, yeah. doing, it, she's doing it like this. Wow. That is impressive. Definitely some natural talent. You have to be being that young like that. And, you know, yeah. I think she's also done an incredible job of marketing, too. She's got her stuff out there in a very professional-looking manner. Mm -hmm. 
You know, her, her site is clean. It's yeah. organized. It looks, it's simple. You know, it, yeah. it leaves you wanting more. That's the good thing. It leaves you wanting more. Wow. Yeah. She does some fantastic work. Okay. Well, let's see. So we talked about Jay Reed and yeah. Charlie Bowater. Let's move on to Francois Neely. All right. Francois Neely. Now, I know that when you saw this stuff, you were over the moon. You felt yeah, I mean, I love this this guy's use of color. I mean, I could I could talk about. Hold on, let me see if I can find. I could talk about his work all day. This guy's work. This guy's stuff is so impressive. I mean, as an artist, I I strive to just. I know that to. I strive just to just to conceive an idea like this i, I mean I we should watch the video can we even watch the video on here yeah let's, let's see it. all right it's five minutes long uh we might maybe we don't want to watch that whole thing yeah all right let's see if we can even hear it no we can't even hear it so it's in another language too uh let me see navigate navigate come on I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the one, I, I don't see it, the one that impressed me the most. Okay, I think we found that, was it under exhibitions? I vaguely uh, remember, we went through so many sites, I vaguely remember this one. Okay, let me try exhibitions. The use of color, he <clears throat> had just an incredible, uh, okay, yeah. well, his new site. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally getting off track over here, but um, yeah, the whole point, I'm I was trying to find the one that I was really impressed with the most. You can really pick any one of them, but um, look at that. Look at it. this is this is what I was talking about. Why I wanted to have him on the review was because it's a contrast between impressionism and realism. It, it, the face totally it, proportionately it looks correct anatomically. I mean, everything looks like it's in the right place. The lighting looks correct. The way it goes from yellow on the left side of the face to, to dark blue on the right, and it looks like there's some sort of light shining on it. And then it's like, it's realism, you know it's a face, but at the same time when you look at it, it's just a bunch of brush strokes and paint splatters. So it's like impressionism, abstract, mixed with realism, which is why I think it, it's so amazing. So how did he do this, digitally or? No, I think he did this with a brush. Wow. I think this is actual traditional. So it's not, you don't think that he sketched this first and then went in and painted? He might have. Or, 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 or did his outline with a, with a paintbrush. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Look at how he does these. I mean, I, mean, I, just, I just don't think like this. I wouldn't think of doing an impressionistic, realistic photo a portrait of a person and doing it in multicolors like that. I just, I just don't think like that. But I, I mean, when I, when I look at his work, it's so amazing how he does this. So do you think that if you put your mind to it, could you do something like that? Or is that, yeah, I, could. I, could. I mean, if I wanted to copy what he did, all I need to, all I need to do is just look at his work and mimic exactly what he did. It's real easy to copy somebody. It's hard to conceive the idea from birth. It's hard to be original. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to be original. I strive to be original every time I draw something. Wow, look at that. Look at the hot pink. I love those colors, hot pink, teal, blue. That's so nice with the yellow. And here's another thing that, that uh, people don't know, is that in art, you have contrasting colors, like black and white are contrasting colors. Black is the opposite of white. Uh, in, in colors, there's also opposites and contrasting colors. You have yellow, which is the opposite of purple. And when you put them together, uh, the mo the human mind just likes it automatically. So, um, because I, I, that's just the way nature made colors, or God, if you will. But um, here you go, yellow and purple, contrasting colors. Purple and orange, I mean, blue and orange, teal, blue, there's a little orange. He's using, he knows what he's doing. He's using uh, contrasting colors. Wow. I mean, the dynamics of these pieces are, are, are just out of control. So he is from Paris, France, it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Oil on canvas. It tells us right there what he's done here. Wow, and it's in oil too. What is that um, palette knife technique? What is that? 
Uh, that's when you use like a um. I, I want to say a knife, but technically, te literally, it's not a knife. It looks like a knife, and mm -hmm. um, you put uh, you put paint on it, and uh, when you make when you when you press the metal uh, surface against the canvas with the paint on it, it gives you brush strokes sort of like these. Okay. Uh, it, it gives you a, a much different brush stroke than it does than you would get from a regular brush. So maybe he didn't use any brushes, or would you still have to use brushes? I mean, I, I think he would use both. Wow! Look at that! Look at that! It's like it photorealism. It, he does such a good job with the face that it makes me want to see what the body looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. You, there's so many commercial uses for artwork like this. I mean, you can hang this up in a hotel. You can hang this up in your office. Oh yeah. You could hang this up in a in, in a and restaurant. It would, be, it would be a real conversation piece. Like, look at that. I'm sure people would ask about that. Where did you get that? You know, they you could see yeah. it all day long, and it would just look different every time. Wow, this guy's work is really. I really like his work. His, his work is really fantastic. Oh wow! Look at that. Look at that. The shape, of the bend of the nose, and the shape of the face. Everything like that. Wow, that is really. That is so cool. I love how. Maybe he. Maybe he is using the uh, the knife a lot more than I think he is. Because I don't understand. I don't understand some of these brush strokes. Maybe they're not brushes at all. Maybe it is a knife. I mean, I've never. I've never uh, even attempted to try it. And, and do something uh, like this. That's so cool. I yeah. wonder, do you think that it is possible for somebody to get this look digitally? Yeah. I don't think that's what he did here. In fact, he tells us how he did it, but yeah. can somebody do this in a digital way? I think they can. I think they can. Um, it probably will take years of practice to be able to get to this level to make it look like, like brush strokes. And uh, you know the knife, uh, but uh, I think it can be done digitally. I, I just think it would take years of practice because the computer, the computer just just doesn't do this. This is human talent. Yeah. This is this is human talent. Somebody somebody's imagination, and um, you know, putting it to good use. Okay. Okay. I want to go back to his home page. How do we do that? Uh, the back button? Okay. Contact? Okay, yeah, we never did go to... Hang on. I want to go to the exhibitions. We never made it there. All right. Let's try that real quick. Okay. Okay, well, I don't read French, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, I don't know what I thought we'd find here. So I guess these are just different dates. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably got a lot of shows. I mean, I would imagine he's a very successful artist. His work is amazing. Oh, look, he has a store. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, really? You can buy prints. How much are his prints? Are they affordable? That looks so smart. Look at that above the, the sofa there. That looks yeah. really Yeah. Oh, he does scarves. So cool. Let's see, what is this? Scarves and bandanas. Oh, wow, that is so cool. That is how so does somebody, cool. How does somebody do that? Is that on cloth? It's probably a digital print. Uh, the pro it's a process. Okay, I, it, on, his, on his website, there are pictures of him doing painting the actual canvases. They are painted traditionally. Um, so what they do is, uh, they'll take you through a professional photo shoot since they are so large, you probably can't scan it, or maybe they do have a large scanner and they are scanning the originals. Either way, they have to scan the artwork and then uh, a graphic designer prepares it for the scarf. And then there's wow. a computer that prints the artwork exactly the way it's, uh, it, it was meant to onto the, onto the scarf and, uh, it's a digital print. Um, pretty, most, most places online, you can get this done yourself if you're an artist. Um, you just got to give them uh, the appropriate digital file. 
and they can print your artwork just about on wow that's so cool they can print your artwork just about on anything doesn't that look awesome that looks like it could be a billboard yeah right there that is this guy's talented and yeah. you know richard he's another one that i is obviously let's see how do we get back to his i'm not sure how we get back to his regular page uh um, whoops uh we'll do this we'll just go back <laughs> okay. but another one that i think is you know obviously we can't read everything because it's in a different language but yeah he's one who obviously knows how to market himself and he's doing this professionally he's not just you know he's not joking around here yeah um you know maybe he was at the right place at the right time you know or, or you know what i think it is i think he just has uh i i hate using this word because it might be taken out of context but um, gimmick is the word that I want to say. He has the right gimmick. He's using this impressionism, contrasting with photorealism, also uh, using the the spectrum of the color of of of, of color, uh, using the spectrum. So he's got this he's got this product that people like. Well, I think that rather than I, I understand what you mean by using the word gimmick, but maybe branding. Like this is his. No, um, this isn't really branding because um. This is his stamp of. His trademark style. I, yeah, yeah, trademark style. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is his trademark style. So obviously, he said, "Okay, people like this. This sells. This works. This is what I'm gonna do." Right. You know, do what you know, and if it works for you, then don't change that up. Right. Huh. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, most artists that are successful have, have a trademark style that you can recognize as soon as you see it. And yeah. uh, he's, he's, looks like he has sculptures too. Yeah. Oh, I remember when you and I were going through some of the websites trying to find some artists, and we did look at these sculptures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's some of his, he's got his earlier work as far back as 2002, and then it goes on up. Oh wow, look at that. What and is then he, this? And then he got into a gallery and the rest is history. I don't know what that is, but I like the color. Pretty abstract. Yeah, probably just an experimental piece just to see what the brushes will do. Yeah, he was probably, he was probably toying around just to see what the brushes will do until he realized he can make faces like that and then discovered it. And was, I mean, I don't know how he did it, but he did a very good job. He made a career out of it. Very, very talented. Well, we've looked at three different artists today. And I know this one, this was one that you were like really, really, really excited about. Wow. These yeah, are a little bit yeah. different. This is some of his earlier stuff. This is, a. I don't think there's as much color in his earlier stuff. Do you? Well, it, it probably was still in the experimental stage. Um, this, this is the, uh, this is the early beginnings of what it is now. Okay, and, so um, that, we looked at 2002. If, let's jump up to like 2009. Okay. See his progression. See, see, there's yeah. a lot more color that he started introducing. Right. Still, maybe a little bit different look than what he has now, even 2016. Yeah. See, I think these are almost more pastel looking. Okay. On 2009, do you think so? Uh, pastel as in the medium or pastel as in the, the, like the tones of color? Well, see how bright these colors are? These are much darker colors. And he's using a lot of fluorescent in these as well. Right. And then we jump up here in 2016 and they're lighter. They're, not, they're a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what he I mean? Probably yeah, because he probably did Tone a series down. of fluorescent colors. And then well, and you also have here. to look at what's popular. What was popular in 2009 as far as colors go. And we've right. seen a lot of stuff now. People are decorating with more muted colors. More of the, you know, you know what I mean? You know, I think, you know, I think he gets commissioned by multimillionaires. That's what it looks like to me. I think some of these people are real people who paid him big money to do a portrait of them. That's what it looks like. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. 
Yeah, his work is really outstanding. I can't stop staring at it. It's so good. I know this was one you were super excited about. So let's go ahead and um, let's stop the screen share for just a second here. Okay. You got that? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, let's talk about this for a minute. We looked at three artists today. We looked okay. at, what was the first one? Jay. Jay Reed. Jay Reed. And yeah. then Charlie. Charlie Bowater. Bowater. And this last one was uh, Francois Neely. Yeah. And so each one of them, excellent, excellent, excellent artists, very, very professional and precise in their own right, but three completely different genres, would you say? Yeah, completely. Yeah, one is uh, artist Jay Reed is comic book and illustration, Charlie Bowater is fantasy art, and um, Francois Neely is uh, fine art. So here's what I think that anybody can agree with even if that's not a genre that you would be naturally drawn to there's no argument that their work is top-notch i think whatsoever. so and not only is their work really good but they each one of them has done a pretty good job of marketing themselves and they're obviously doing this for a living and earning a good living doing that and i always like to dispel this idea that artists are starving artists because it's i mean you know this firsthand it is possible to make a living with art yeah forget that people are people think that if you're an artist you don't really work and that's not true i mean even you told me that sometimes some of your pieces can take you weeks or even months to create right no i've never taken no months or <laughs> I, the law yeah i think that's the longest some of my paintings have taken has been like two weeks yeah so when people say artists are not actually doing anything for a living that's not true I mean, you work, you work hard to create yeah. these things for people. So even like the ones that we looked at today, even if that might not be somebody's favorite genre, there's no way they can argue that they weren't good at what they did. Right. They obviously had some skill. Yeah. So did you have a favorite today or did you like, I, cause here's my thing. I liked each one of them. It's hard to pick a favorite because they were so different. They were, yeah. every one of them was different in their own way. I mean, I, you know, the, the answer to that question is uh, all three were my favorite because uh, we looked through like hundreds of artists before yeah. we chose these three for the show. So um, I think we picked out my three favorite after, after scouting through like about 200 artists, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, each one stands strong in their own field. And uh, that, that's why I, I really wanted to uh, review these on the show um, because they, they are an example of what an up-and-coming artist should strive for. You know, if, if you want, um, you know, if you, if you want to get in the industry and you want to turn it into a living, then take a look at these three artists and, uh, and, and model yourself after their career. Learn what they did. And and try to do it do it yourself, but you're you're gonna have to do it your own way because no two artists have the same exact path. No nobody has the same exact career. So right. um, you're gonna have you know as an up and coming artist, you're gonna have decisions to make on your own. Uh, it's gonna be up to you to educate yourself and learn what you need to do, like how to price the artwork. Um, you know, building a portfolio, uh, how to market it keeping a contact list. Um, there, there's so many things to the business other than just drawing a picture. But um, it does start with the talent first. And you have to be good at what you do from the start before you can decide to turn it into a career. So practice is another thing. You definitely have to practice and yeah. build it up. You know? well, I like what you said, you know, model yourself after these guys, but be original. Don't steal somebody else's idea. Don't steal somebody. Yeah. Else. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You there don't are plenty of copycat artists out there. Right. And believe me, none of them are as successful as the real deal. So find right. a way, but you can certainly get ideas on techniques and, you know, if they're selling their stuff, it means people like it. And so kind of model that you know how are they selling their stuff what is it that people want am i capable of doing something similar to that but putting my own style into it yeah and if yeah. so go for it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well i'm excited i you know hopefully we get to hear back from some of these artists and um i can't wait until next month i think next month we're going to do some fun stuff too and talk about okay some 
some cool stuff. Yeah, we'll def we we're, we'll have we'll definitely have some more artists, yep. you know, yep. to review, and uh, that'd be pretty cool. I want to do an amateur artist review. You know, somebody that we look at and go, hey, okay, they're not there yet. They're not this Francois Neely. They're not the people that we looked at today, but they have potential. And yeah. I want to take a look at some of that. So we'll get to do that. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay. So what do you want to leave us with? Any any parting words of wisdom before we go? Uh, well, thanks for watching the show. This was our first artist review. I think it went well. And, um, uh, you know, we had a few hitches here and there, but I think we're going to get it together. And, um, you know, maybe we can turn this into some sort of educational show. Awesome. Where um, artists can come and, and maybe learn a, a thing or two about the art business and what they need to be doing to get to where they need to go yeah i'd like to see that happen i would and you know for for you guys that are watching we want some feedback richard and i really want some feedback from you let us know what you want do you want us to have artists on here that might teach you a little bit of their technique um are there certain artists that you would like for us to take a look at or get a hold of you know give us your feedback because we're kind of counting on you to tell us which way to go with all of this right richard yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Give us, send us an email. Send us an email. That's great. And so, if you want to know where you can send an email, you can get a hold of me or Richard. Richard, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, rich at rsantiagoart.com. Okay. Or you can get a hold of me, Laura, at followlaura.com. So, all right. Well, Richard, it's been fun. We're going to do this again next month. And I'm so glad that you are. Um, you know, you're on board for this and I need okay. your expertise. I can't do this without you. So thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you everybody for watching the Get Clear show. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.